All right, these are some um, pretty quick notes here on balancing equations, just to kind of know the parts of an equation. So here you have an equation. So you have Na, this is sodium, and you have chlorine. This means there are two of them. So you can see in this picture there are two chlorines. And you add them together and you get salt. This is the salt that you eat. And the reason why there's two chlorines is there's just some elements out there that always hang out in twos. They're called your diatomic elements. So chlorine is one of them. Oxygen is another. Hydrogen is another one. They're never found alone. They're always found in pairs. And um, you'll just see that a number of times, Cl2. So the reactants in this equation are the two or more compounds that are being mixed together. So in this case, it is Na and Cl2. These are your reactants. And then the products are what you get um, after the chemical reaction. So if you add these together, you will get an ACL, which is your product, and that is salt. So reactants over here, products over here. And then in the middle, you're going to have this arrow, and this is called a yield sign. And usually the yield sign points to the right, but sometimes it can point in both directions, and that's when a chemical reaction is reversible, meaning it could go forward and also backwards. So for now, we're just going to see right pointing arrows, but this is basically like an equal sign. It's telling you this and this, um, add them together, and you'll get this on the other side. So the coefficients are things that you're going to add to a chemical equation to show you how many of each kind of compound that you have. So an example here in making water, you have H2 plus O2 gives you H2O, but um, you need the same number of molecules on the left side of the reaction that you have on the right side of the reaction. And so if we ignore these twos up here, you would have two H's and two O's, and then over here, you would just have two H's and one O. And that doesn't work because that violates the law of of conservation of mass. You can't just destroy or create matter. So we add these twos here. This You take this front two and you multiply by this back two. And this actually gives you four H's and two O's. There's no coefficient here. Four H's, two O's. And if you look over here, this goes to everything behind it. So this two times two, this is also four H's. And then two times this O gives you two O's. And so now we have four H's and two O's on both the left and the right side. And you do that by coefficients. And that is what you're going to be learning and practicing for the next two weeks. What are the coefficients that I need to add to make sure I have the same on the left and the right? So the reason we do this is because of the law of conservation of mass written by Antoine Lavoisier in 1789. And he discovered that matter is neither created nor destroyed. So whatever goes into the reaction has to come out of the reaction. If you start with 30 grams of reactants, you are going to get 30 grams of product. There is no loss there. Um, the matter does not just disappear. You should always have the same on the left side of the arrow as you have on the right side of the arrow. And so the mass of the products has to equal the mass of the reactants. And that's what the law of conservation of mass says. And so in order to make sure our equations follow that, we write balanced equations. So when what's on the product side equal what's on the reactant side, then the equation is considered balanced. So right now we're going to go and um, balance some equations. So at the bottom of your notes, you have these um, two equations to balance. So I'm going to show you how you show your work on balancing equations. So for this week, on all the assignments that you do, I want you to show your work on every single problem. Now at some point in time, you might be able to start doing these in your head. The more of them you do, the easier this gets. But for right now, you need to show your work for this week, um, for next week, because we'll still practice balance equations. If you're at the point where you can you know, balance these just by looking at them, then you can you know stop showing your work. But for now, please continue to show your work on these problems. So here's how you show your work. You write the names of the compounds, an A, um, and then I have an I. Okay, So that's what I have. I have Na and I have I. That's it. You just list them. Then over here on the right side, you also write the names of the compounds, Na and I. It's easier if you just write them in the same order on the left and the right, even if that's not the order that they appear um, on the right side. Just list these. These should look the same. 
Okay. Then the next thing you do is you count. So how many NAs are in this equation? And the answer is one. There's no numbers after it. There's no numbers before it. So this is just going to be a single um, atom or mole or whatever of Na in this equation. So I put a one there. Now for i's, I have a two after it. So I'm going to put a two after the i there. So I have two of them. Now over here, I count an Na. I just have one. There's no numbers there after the Na. So it's just one Na. And for i, it is also just one. All right, so now I have my counts. Then your job is going to be to make everything equal on the left and the right side, so that way they have the same numbers. And so um, NAs are equal. I have one NA over here, and I have one NA over here, and so those are already equal. I don't need to do anything to the NAs. But when I look at I, I have two I's on the right side, because I is one of those diatomics that likes to hang out in pairs instead of by itself. Um, and so I has two, but over here, the I only has one. So what you need to do here is you need to make this two. I'm gonna grab my drawing tool, I'm gonna cross this off, uh, get a new text box, and this is now going to be a number two. So how do we make it two? Well, we do that by putting a two right here on this line. Um, and this will give you two i's, but it will also give you two na's. So this number two distributes to everything behind it, and so it gives you two na's and two i's. So if I cross off this one, now I also have two na's over here. Okay. Now that upset the balance that I had earlier with my na, so my i's are done. I got two I's on each side, but now I have two NA's over here and I only have one over here, so I cross off this one and then I'm going to turn this into a two and the way I do that is by adding a coefficient which will go right here on the line and this will give me two NA's and now you can see that it is balanced. I have two NA's on the left and two NA's on the right and over here I have two I's on the left and two I's on the right and when you get to the point that everything is balanced left and right, then you have balanced the equation. So here, um, this one has more compounds in it. So again, you just start by listing them. AL and then H. And then here is something different. So this SO4 is called a polyatomic ion. And you can see that it stays together as SO4 over here. And so there one of the ways you can tell that you have a polyatomic ion is you'll have three capital letters in a compound. Um, normally it's just two capital letters in a compound. But if you see three capital letters in a compound, you might have a polyatomic ion there. And the way you can confirm that is I will post a list each week, let me show you where it is, of the polyatomic ions um, that you most often see. And so that's here at the top of the week nine module. And so you can open that list up. And it is a PDF. So um, what I was looking at in my equation here is SO4. And I can see that SO4 here is down here. It is sulfate. It acts as one thing, even though it's not. It's two things. It's S and O, but they behave as if they are one thing together. And so if you see something on this list, these polyatomics lists, which you'll recognize because you have three capital letters at least in a compound, what you do is you list that as it is one thing. I list that as, as if SO4 is a single object, even though I know it's not a single object, it's S and O4. But um, if it stays together on the left and the right, SO4, SO4, it's much easier to just count them as if they are one object than to try and separate them and balance your S's separate from your O's. So you can do that. You could list S and you could list O and you could then balance them separately, but um, it is a little bit more difficult. So these are polyatomics. You'll see more of them next week. You won't see as many this week. So I have AL, H and SO4. And then um, on this side of the uh, equation, you also want to list the same thing in the same order, AL, H, SO4. Even if it doesn't appear in that same order, you want to still list them the same on the left and the right. That way you don't um, balance things incorrectly. Now you do your counts. So there is one AL, there are two H's, 
and then there's just one SO4. Not four SO4s, there's just one SO4. That four is already accounted for in the polyatomic, and there's just one of them. The other way you would know if a polyatomic is present is if you see a parentheses. Anytime you see a parentheses, you know there's a polyatomic somewhere in that equation, and so here you can see the parentheses. Now it's not always in parentheses, like right here, but a parentheses is a dead giveaway that somewhere in your equation there's a polyatomic. So over here on this side there are two ALs, there are two H's, and then um, SO4, there's a three after it, so this tells me that there are three SO4s. Alright, so then um, usually in balancing equations I tend to leave hydrogens for last, they are balanced right now, um, but I leave them for last because they are a little bit more complicated, they also sometimes tend to be spread out. So I usually balance metals first, so in this case that would be the AL, and so there were two on the right and only one on the left, so I'm going to need a two right here, and so then this is no longer one, this becomes two aluminums. And then um, the SO4s are not balanced. There are three over here and only one over here. So the way I give myself three SO4s is I put this three in the front, but that three will go to the H's and the SO4s. Three times two gives me six H's now. And then three times one SO4 gives me now three SO4s, which is what I wanted. All right, so then the last thing that's not balanced is the H's, and so there are only two here. I need six of them, so two times something equals six, and that would be three, and so now I'm going to have six H's over here on the right side. And then you you know take a look, make sure that AL's are the same on the left and the right, H's are the same, SO4's are the same, and once you get to that, then the equation is balanced. Sometimes you'll have blank lines here. You can just leave them blank. Um, sometimes people like to write in number ones, but what you'll find with chemists is that they don't like the number one. They don't put in ones. So like there's one AL here, but it's not like they write the number one after that. We just tend to leave number ones out, so you can just leave those lines as blink. You won't see a coefficient as a one ever. Um, it'll just be blink in front of that um, compound. So that is kind of a sneak peek of balancing equations. You're going to do a lot more of this over the next um, this week and then also next week.